Hey, I'm Mark Sopchago, CEO and founder of Empowered Man. And in our video today, we're gonna to be talking specifically about co-parenting with a toxic ex. This is a tough one. Why? Because we don't want to do this. I don't know about you, but if you have a ex-wife or yeah, if you're hopefully your man watching this, and she's toxic and she's narcissistic especially, it's really, really hard to co-parent with them. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna give you my three best examples or ways that you can work with this person. And now a caveat is every relationship's different. <laughs> so I'm gonna generalize this and, and use kind of some examples from my own world, but understand that courts are different, states are different in terms of what's allowed, what's not allowed, et cetera. So this is not legal advice around child support or, ch or any of the child stuff. Uh, I can't give that advice. What I can do is tell you kind of what has helped me be successful in co-parenting with my ex-wife who it has, where it has been toxic. Um, there have been times where it's not toxic. There have been lots of toxic times, including uh, her boyfriend and bringing those situations into, um, you know, sporting events and, uh, my home, etc. So I'm just going to be upfront and clear that uh, some of those things are prevailing. So I've lived this stuff, I've experienced it, been doing this now for a couple of years. Um, not my favorite topic, but I know it's something that a lot of you want to hear about. So let's just dive in. So the very first thing that you've got to be able to do for you and your kids is you got to have clear boundaries. Have to have clear boundaries. Um, the boundaries for for you as a as a, as a spouse or as a co-parent have to be clear around what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do, um, what lengths you're willing to go and what lengths you're not willing to go. I mean, this, this has everything to do with changing pickup times, um, negotiating on changing dates for, for holidays, um, et cetera. Because if you don't have those clear boundaries, many, many, many times a toxic ex spouse will take advantage of you, especially if you're the nice guy. You go, well, I'm just being nice, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And I did this for a while in the beginning because I didn't want tension. You know, we just went through a divorce. Why bring more tension into the kids' stuff, right? I always thought we were great parents, so I thought, ah, eh, being co-parents would be easy. Not quite. And the reason for it is because there's usually still emotions involved in co-parenting. Both myself and my current wife can tell you that about our exes. When they still have feelings for you, they bring those feelings into co-parenting. So it's not as simple as we'd like it to be, not as cut and dry as we would like it to be. The number one thing is having clear boundaries. So clear boundaries specifically, um, I, I would have very clear boundaries for yourself around what you're willing to accept and what you're not willing to accept. So for example, are you amenable to, to essentially um, have her change her drop off and pick up times? Are you okay with that? If you're not okay with that, it needs to be clear. Hey, it's not okay for us to change pickup times. I'm okay with doing it this time. I'm not okay with doing it moving forward. <clears throat> so your communication with her needs to be very, 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 very direct. If you're not used to being direct, you gotta practice. You might have to take a course. You might have to come into our Thrive program because we teach direct communication in, in Thrive. I was not always a direct communicator and I still sometimes struggle with being a direct communicator. Thankfully, I have a wife now who has helped me exponentially in becoming a more direct communicator, especially with my ex-wife and comment communicating my boundaries with her. Uh, the reason for this is because if you are not direct, they don't know what you mean. They don't know what you mean. So you have to be direct in your boundaries. So, you know, for example, um, you know, she uh, has her kids for the weekend and she's supposed to bring them back on Monday at nine o'clock and she texts you at 8.30 and says, hey, um, there's this thing coming up in our town and I wanna take them to it. Can I take them to this thing and bring them back at five o'clock tonight? Perfect example, happens all the fucking time, right? Your wife is just wanting to have more time with your kids and you have got to make the decision beforehand if you are okay with doing such things. And if you are okay with it, it needs to be clear when and why and how, right? Because if you're not clear with this, let's say you go, yeah, sure, no problem. And then the next time, two weeks later, she asks for this again and you're not okay with it, now you've got, now you've got an argument on your hands, 
right? Because now you gotta explain yourself. So instead, what you need to do is be very, very, very clear up front. Hey, I'm gonna allow it this time, but that doesn't mean I'm setting a precedent for next time. I, I want the kids to be able to enjoy that with you or because they were able to do this, I'm gonna allow you to have this time with them and I hope that you would do the same for me, right? That's another thing I like to drop in there is, I'm gonna allow this, I hope you do the same for me. Because that at least drops the seed of this is co-parenting and there are gonna be times where I'm gonna need her to give me a little extra time or need her to be a little more flexible with what time I drop them off or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So ve having very clear boundaries is the biggest thing you've gotta do. Number two <clears throat> is you've got to be able to keep conversations to a minimum, a minimum. You're not friends. You can be friendly. You don't have to be an asshole. Like, don't be, oh, that's fucking bitch. What's up? Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, fine, fine, right? Don't be an asshole, right? You can be friendly without being friends. This looks like keeping conversations to a minimum. This looks like you being direct in your communication. This looks like you're not texting her about random shit. You're not texting her about stuff that, oh, remember that when our honeymoon? Or, oh, remember when we were married and we do these things? And, oh, look at what I just found. Oh, this is great. Oh, no, 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 none of that shit. Why? Because all that does is invite more things in. Every time you open yourself up to someone who's toxic, and especially when you two had toxic communication in the past, every time you're emotionally vulnerable with them, that's giving them an in. And I don't mean that you have to like, just like fiercely protect yourself from them, but it's like, why go there? Why, what, what is the motivation behind that? That's where I see men get into so much trouble because they're not over her, they're not over the situation. And so they keep trying to do this emotional connection shit. They'll text her random things. Oh, hey, remember when this happened? Oh, you know, I just got this on my Facebook timeline, blah, blah, blah. And I did that for the first few months of my, uh, of my divorce. Why? Because there's, there's this sentimentality of it. There is this like, wow, we spent 17 years together. There's still days that go by that things happen where it's like, man, I wish I could text her th about this thing just because it was cool, just because she shared it in my past, not because I still wanna be with her or have any, really anything to do with her, but just because again, she was a person in my past. But this is where we go into neutral woman. And this is where, for me personally, I recognize that the, mar the, the wife I had and the marriage I had is completely dead. And the person that stands before me is not the same person I was married to. And that person is dead, they are gone. They are, they, they are not the same person. And so we teach that concept called Neutral Woman in Thrive. Uh, I can expound more on it in, in there. And you probably could listen to some other podcasts about it specifically. But, but going neutral and, and keeping it friendly without being friends and being very direct will move things along much, much faster. So number one, have clear boundaries. Number two, keep it very direct. Keep conversations to a minimum. I prefer just text over anything. It, it, it maybe email if, they, if you have to do email through through court whatever it is you're doing um, I don't like doing in-person communication only because it, it's just too easy to get tangled things can get said real fast in the heat of the moment whereas text I can like slow down and not respond right away and maybe I'll respond when I can and the same um, and, and, and I've taught her that so like literally you can teach the person like hey I'm not gonna respond to your text right when you send it to me I'm gonna wait five minutes ten minutes three hours six hours I'll get you today, probably, but I'm not gonna respond within 30 seconds. And that's something you can train them in, essentially, is because they have to understand they're no longer the most important person in your life anymore. Other things and other people are, you're just now a part of the external part of my life. And I just have to deal with that because you, we have kids together. The third thing is don't play the victim. Oh my goodness. I hate it when guys do this. They start playing the victim. Oh, she's not letting me see the kids. Da, 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 da. Like, bro, number one, if there's a court order, that shit stops real fast. Uh, whatever your court stuff says, go do it. Um, I, uh, you know, another thing I can't stand is weekend dads. Like, what, the, what is up with weekend dads? Um, even my dad, when he was divorced, had me 80% of the time. I have my kids 80% of the time. I believe in 50-50 custody and 50-50, you know, joint, if you can do it together, where it's like both parents have 50-50 in physical time. Um, but this whole weekend dad shit, no, that's, that's a side note. Um, and maybe there's certain, you know, court jurisdictions that, that still make that happen. But I think a lot, I think a lot of men need to just like stand up and like get some balls and like go request 50, 50 custody because that's what you should have. Anyways, I digress. Um, <clears throat> don't play the victim. You know, if she's not allowing for something to happen, if she's being the big mom and you're being a little kid, then you're going to feel like a victim a lot. This is where you have to step into your adulthood 
and step into being a fucking man instead of being a disempowered little man, this is where growing up comes into play. Oof, real nice. Guys, we cannot be little boys and be fathers at the same time. It can't happen. Now, can you have some childlike qualities in you? Absolutely, right? Play is an important thing for a man, just as it is for a boy. I love it, play, you know, have games, whatever, do things like that. But at the end of the day, be fucking mature. Be an adult, take responsibility. Look, the more responsible you are for your children and for your own life, the less of a victim you'll have to be. The more responsible for you are for your life and your children, the less of a victim you have to be. A lot of these women, they, they just look at you and you see another, another child, another teenager. You know, and maybe it was cute and it worked in the beginning and when you guys got together, but now it's not anymore. It's not, it's not, it's not cute anymore, right? And so playing the victim just really looks like a guy who refuses to take responsibility, a guy who refuses to take ownership for his shit, wants to blame her for everything. Like, go get them clothes, go get them shoes. Uh, uh, don't just take them to McDonald's, make a fucking meal for them. Like do things for your kids that aren't necessarily, they're not motherly things, they're just being a parent things. I, I think a lot of times in society and culture, we have this like, oh, women cook and women do this and men do this and men do that. No, 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 those rules. I, I think, I don't think rules have changed necessarily. I don't think we have to do that, but I do think there's balance with that. Like men can cook, men can clean, Men can do shit, right? Like that's part of it. Um, so you're just as welcome to go, you know, to the grocery store and, and, and get groceries and come home and cook a good meal for your kids. I know a lot of guys that do that and do it really, really well. And I know a lot of guys that just won't do it. And they and they blame their wives because of, well, I don't have money. I got child support, this, that. Go get a fucking side job. I, that's, what, that's the thing that amazed me the most about guys that like literally have one job. They work 40 hours a week. They don't have their kids half, more than half the time and they don't fucking work another job. Like what the hell are you doing with your life? Great, you got hobbies, cool. But like, how are you gonna get out of child support? How are you gonna like, do this is your chance to get ahead. Stop wasting it. So again, in co-parenting with an ex, there's three main things you gotta do. Number one, have clear boundaries. Be very direct in those boundaries. Be very direct in your communication. That's number two, is keeping conversations to a minimum. You don't wanna be talking, over talking with her because as you're over talking with her, you're giving her ammunition for it to become a fight. You don't wanna do that. You can be friends, not you can be friendly without being friends. Friendly without being friends. And number three, don't play the victim. Stop playing the victim. Time to own your shit, time to be responsible, and I will see you on the other side.